Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing it is to be coming back in our Wednesday night Bible study. Thank God for those of you in the sanctuary and those who are watching by YouTube and Facebook. I tell you, how many know God is a good God? Amen. Oh, he is absolutely awesome. Praise God. And, and we love him because he first loved us. Praise God. We have a wonderful lesson tonight. Praise God. We're going to be talking about go. Just simply go. Just go. Just go. And we're still in the book of uh, Acts chapter 8. That's a long chapter, but we're getting through it. But we we just enjoying it. Amen. Do thank God for our lovely first lady, Dr. Joyce Marie Thomas. How you doing, sweetheart? Yes. Amen. Thank God for our, our executive pastor. Praise yes. God. Yes. Ella Corey Thomas in the house. God bless Corey. Amen. And I tell you, he helping, he helping his father a lot. He's doing a lot of things. I said, you take care of it, Kay, uh, Corey. I, I tell you, I'm, I tell you, I'm not going off the scene, but I, I need help these days, Dr. Cotwell. Amen. And we thank God for Dr. Cotwell and all of you in the sanctuary. Praise God. What a blessing it is to be here. And, and uh, we want to thank all of you who, and thank God for Ella Ely, praise God, who did a homegoing service today, and I heard it was a, re a really blessing. Thank God for Dad Gibson being in. Amen. Well, we had a, uh, we want to thank all of you how you supported our 36th annual Holy Convocation. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And we had a wonderful theme, living holy during these challenging times. And, and I, I think it's so imperative that the church live the life because the Bible says men will see our good works and they'll glorify the Father in heaven. And it's so important that the saints stand up and be saints. Amen. Now, some people get angry when you tell them about living holy, but God doesn't save us to stay in our sins. Amen. Now, now let me quickly say this to those who think they're going to heaven on their works. You're not going to go to heaven by your works. But the Bible did say we are saved by grace through faith unto good works. So when you get saved, they're going to be a metamorphosis or... You're going to stop being that caterpillar, and you're going to become a butterfly. If you've been a caterpillar for 30, 40 years, something wrong with that. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 uh, and the world needs to see the saints being the saints, and, and we just have to ask God every day of our lives to help us walk upright Amen. because we are saved. Amen. The Bible tells us to come out of the world Amen. and be saved. Now, God, God knows we're in this world. He wants us to have a good time. But we got to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to go back in that world no more. Amen. I say, I wouldn't want to go back in the world no more. Amen. Used to be a song that said, you can have this whole world. Give Just give me Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord. Man, I'm so glad I'm saved. Praise God. Because if Jesus delay his coming, one day, one day. all of us are going to stand before God. Amen. 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 And I tell you what, I, 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 I want to stand before him boldly. I want to say, Lord, I, I strove to do the things you wanted me to do. Sure, none of us are perfect in this flesh, but the Bible says Jesus in us is the hope of glory. Amen. And he tells us, he told us to put a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. If we're doing the same thing off of my friend coming in, God bless you, my brother. If we're doing the same thing the world doing, well, we're not going to be a light for the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. And I, I, I know, and then we got to consider people growing the Lord, but God wants us to make a difference in this world. This world, this world is doing some crazy stuff now. Uh, scripture says they'll be, they'll be calling wrong right and right wrong. Uh, in, in, in elementary school, they're trying to get children I want, want parents to give children the permission to change their sex. Mm -hmm. if, they, if, if they're a boy and they feel they want to get an operation to be a girl, they want to let them start doing that real young. You know that's the devil. Yeah. Then they want to get on the church for standing up preaching on it. Saints, we dare not compromise now. Amen. We got to call wrong, wrong. Yes. Amen. 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 We got to call wrong, wrong. Hey Amen. I mean, homosexuality is a sin. Just like over, isn't overeating a sin? Yes. Well, homosexuality is a sin. And they get angry with us when we preach. God loved the homosexual, but he, he, he hate that sin. Amen. 
Amen. And if we don't preach on it, this is what's going to happen. People are going to keep doing it and doing it, and they're going to think it right because the church is scared to talk on it. Trying to build our church where we don't want to offend. The gospel is going to offend somebody. Amen. Jesus said, think not that I came, praise God, to bring peace. Jesus said, I came to bring a sword. If you preach the gospel right, the gospel is going to step on somebody's toes. If the gospel don't step on your toes, I'll tell you, you're in a milk toast church, and you got a preacher who don't care about your soul. Because all of, I'll tell you something, I was in Bible Bearing the other day, Marie and I, and the lesson was on uh, greed. The lesson was on greed, and that lesson stirred my soul. Because I don't care how long you've been saved, the word come to help us all. And I said, Lord, I thank you for how you done blessed me. I appreciate it. I want to share with people. I, I don't want to be grabbing a dollar every turn, praise God. Amen. I was telling y'all about my pastor's anniversary. I, I, I want a pastor's anniversary, but y'all don't have to go all out for Sister Thomas and I like y'all once have done. Amen. We've been blessed a little bit. We don't, our children are grown now. Y'all better give me $100,000, Doc. Whatever y'all bless us with, we're going to be satisfied. Amen. And I say that with an understanding because you all been good to us. And, and just greed, people just working over time and just grabbing stuff. And that lesson stirred my soul. Yes. Anytime you think you have arrived and the word don't help you, the devil got you food, buddy. Yes. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what your status is. Dad Carver, that was going to happen to a lot of preachers. They don't like to sit up under the word like you. Some preachers think, oh, well, man, I don't need that, Doc. I know. Preachers need to be sitting up under the word more than anybody else. Because, see, it's not just a word, Larry. Sometimes God will give you a rhema word. Like that lesson in Bible band, Mother Cartwell spoke to my soul. That was rhema. I knew that. I hadn't studied that. But the Holy Ghost could take that word and make it come alive. Peter say, I know y'all done heard me preach this several times, but it's good for me to preach it to you again that I can stir your pure mind. Right. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank God for the word. Thank Amen. God. Tonight we're simply talking about gold, and we, 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 we got out of, we were, we've been talking about uh, nine or uh, eight evidence, uh, uh, eightfold evidence of when, when revival came, and we were, we're not going to be redundant and go back through that. And we were, we touched a little bit on the eighth evidence. We say that uh, and, and um, uh, uh. <laughs> look like, praise God. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 25. I promise we're not to go back through this. And this is the eighth evidence. The eighth evidence is hearts were open to be evangelized. When, when, when a revival comes, God's going to open people's hearts. Now, I'm not going to talk on this, but this is the last evidence that you know revival has come. When a revival, when, when God sent a revival to a church or to a community, people's hearts become open. They want to hear the word. And I don't care how mean a person may have been. When the Holy Ghost break down the walls of division and strife and bitterness and the preachers go in and preach the word, people's hearts become open to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. None of us, none of us, to understand God's word without the Holy Spirit illuminating our mind. If you know God at all, you need to thank God for one day the Holy Ghost opening your minds up to the word of God. Hallelujah. Read, read, read verse 25 of, of Acts chapter 8, and we're about to get through there. That's a long chapter. Well, it's only had 40 verses, but we're we about through there. Praise God. Read that, Acts chapter 8, verse 20. Now, this is the last evidence of revival. There were several. We went over seven of them. And we're just going to touch on this a little bit before we move on in our lesson tonight. Read, Sister Thomas. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Now, now y'all see this here? Praise God. Uh, it says, when they had testified and preached the word of, word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem. Now, Peter and James come and others came. They were helping Philip. Philip wasn't in this by himself. He had other help. But they was preaching the gospel in a place called Samaria. Now, if you know anything about the Samaria and, and the Jewish people, they thought it was half-brothers, really, but they didn't get along. Amen? But, but, but when revival comes, you'll share the word with anybody. Amen? Amen. By the, the, matter of fact, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians, we who walk in the Spirit know no man after the flesh. 
By that, by, by that, Paul was saying, when you are in the spirit, praise God, and you're saved, you don't look at, we shouldn't be looking at people color. We shouldn't say, I'm just going to preach to the blacks. I'm just going to, praise God, you preach the gospel to whomever the Lord or wherever the Lord send you. Amen. Amen. And you don't look at it as a black thing, a white thing, an African. Matter of fact, we have so many of our, our dear white brothers, I, I look on TV, these people go over to Africa and be preaching to Africans. Uh, uh, and stuff like this. And the news media make you think that white people hate blacks. I'd be saying, if they hate blacks, why are they over there in Africa? Them people in Africa are blacker than me. That's just, that just, that's just the trick of the devil Amen. to try to keep people at odds. Well, you got to watch a lot of stuff you see on the news. Amen. The news try to sell news. They, they sensationalize the news. But you, I see my, uh, our white brothers and sisters over there preaching the word and, and, and trying to help people building water pumps and, and all this here. Because the Bible done, has given all of us the mandate to go into where? All the world. Amen. And you just can't just preach to your color. You, you give the gospel to anybody. Now, I will say this. There are some people don't want to hear the gospel from anybody. True. Amen. You, you, got, you got some black and white. You got some whites who won't come across these tracks to our church. And you got some blacks who won't go to a, in a white church. Uh, it's, it's a new movement out called the Black Hebrews now. And the Black Hebrews, they teaching that, well, God has chosen the black people, praise God, because we are the true Jewish people. And, and one brother told me, praise God, he said, we don't even have to worry about accepting Jesus because Jesus hadn't come yet. Hebrew people don't believe Jesus has come. We automatically go into heaven. I say, well, what about Christ down on the cross? He ain't going to have to die on the cross because we are black. You'll be surprised. I heard that. I say, well, brother, I'll tell you what. I just can't get with that. But there are a lot of people who believe in stuff like that. They're getting caught up in race and all of this. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, praise God, no man, no man. will come to the Father unless we go through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you something, people, are, well, what color Jesus is? I know the revelation and revelation, I believe, uh, uh, one of the scriptures over there around the churches of one church say his hair was like lamb wool and something like lamb wool. You know, most of our hair is sort of like wool. And people say, well, that's how I know he was black. So what if he was black? He loved everybody. And Jesus is not going to just side with one race. The Bible says God so loved. Y'all better talk to me. And he told us to go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Now let me say this. We do thank God for our church. We have some wonderful white and black people in our church. Praise God. Amen. And uh, we thank God for them. And Sister Hale is, is, is Sister Thomas' bodyguard. Amen. God bless you, Sister Hale. I'll leave that alone. Amen. But that's the way it ought to be. I feel sorry for people who think God is a God of color. God is a God of love. If you want a color God, if you can find a good color for love, tell me what that color is. I think it abstract. God just loved the world. Amen. And it doesn't matter about the color. Now, I say that to say this. Look at the text on the screen. It says, when they had, had, had testified and preached. Now, testimonies is very important when you witness souls. When you go out to uh, uh, witness to people, sometimes you got to give your testimony. I, I hear some, I was telling Brother Ely, he took me out to breakfast the other morning. Larry, I enjoyed that breakfast. I, 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 brother, now, you know, Brother Ely got a, a, a real colorful testimony. Now, you can't tell that testimony in the church every Sunday because everybody don't need to hear all of that. But there are some people out there, Larry, you're going to have to come full force with them and let them know what God brought you out of. Amen? Because that's the only way some people, you're going to have to testify to people, I was into this, this, and that, and that, but God delivered me. And you could tell, man, when people been brought out of some deep stuff, now we all was going to hell. But God delivered some of us from the depth of sin. Amen. Some of us had a depth in sin, praise God. And, and it says, and when they had testified and preached. So you need testimonies. Amen. And even when we get testimonies in our church, we should testify to the glory of God. Amen. Sometimes we come in testifying stuff like, that's why they had to cut out testimony service in a lot of churches because people were testifying to defeat. One lady got up and testified, I was coming to church tonight. 
And when I, when I had my, 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 put my wig on and everything, my old husband went to cutting the food. And he, he got up under my skin. I got that rolling pin. I tried to knock the devil out of it. And then we went to fighting. And I tell you what, he ran me through the house. But boy, I got my scissors and I came back. And they, they were testifying stuff like that. And they had to say, we got to cut our testimony. So we're going to go to a praise service because people went to testify to the feet. Amen. I should lay the cutter came to church. I thank God. The devil tried me the other night, but thank God for the for the power of the Holy Ghost. He gave me victory. Make sure. Thank God for my brother coming. We're so glad to see you. Brother got touched in the in the, in the convocation. Amen. Amen. But but a good testimony is very important to tell how God brought you out. Amen. But really, you got to know when to go in, go in the depth of your testimony. You can't go in the garbage can of your life around everybody. We saw it once, we saw a group of ladies in this church when Lena them was small, was in high school, and they were teaching Sunday school and stuff like that. And God had, had, had they were beautifully saved in the Air Force, and they were helping Lena and some more little girls in the church. And they would tell Lena them all the bad stuff they did. And they meant well, praise God. And Lena them in high school and all, they heard them girls say, wow, look at their life now, man. They doing good, and they did all that bad. Maybe we got to try to do some bad too. And God going to, so you, you got to know how far to go in the depth of your self-testimony. Right, right, right. But when you get, you, you, I guarantee you'll meet somebody on that street who been in or close to some of the same stuff you, God brought you out of. And when you tell them how God brought you out of some mess, right. there's some things I can't even adequately testify to certain people about. I could tell them about the love of God. I've never been on drugs. Amen. I never been, been been hooked on drugs, but you got a drug addict. They could tell you how they were craving the walls, how they were craving drugs, and and how they cried out to God, and God set them free. Amen. But you can't tell that every Sunday in church. Amen. Everybody don't need to hear that, cause see, sometimes the church is like a general doctor. A general doctor, people just going to get their blood pressures checked and get their ears looked at and stuff like that. They not general doctors are not specialists. Now, if they find something, what are they going to say? They're going to send you to what? A specialist. So the church is general. You're helping everybody. Everybody ain't been in a mess like you've been in. But they still was on their way to hell. So they began, look at the text. You see, they began to what? Testify and preach. Amen. You need testimonies. Sometimes testimonies, other people, your testimonies have brought a lot of people to the Lord. I, man, I'm telling you, a lot of people, they want to preach, preach, preach. Everybody can't preach. Man, we got some good preachers in this church and missionaries, Mother Wade. Sometimes I wish I could turn all y'all loose, but we, we're going to get these night services going. And, and God be telling me to preach so all of us can't get up and preach. But guess what? We all can go out in that world and tell somebody about a man named Jesus. Okay. They preach the word of what? The Lord. Amen. They return to Jerusalem. And, pre and, and, and some of them preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Now, that shows you how, how, how God opened doors for people to go in hostile places because the Jews and the Mar to Samari Samaritans didn't get along. You know, when Jesus went there and talked with the woman of the well, at, uh, at the well, he said, I had need to go through Samaria. But the disciple was saying, man, is Jesus out of his mind? <laughs> Jesus knew what he was doing. But see, the disciples, they were sort of prejudiced. They weren't going to witness to them as a miracle. See, sometimes before you get the Holy Ghost and you get saved, now every believer got a measure of the Holy Spirit. But before you get anointed and you know God's will, you'll be trying to only witness to people who look like you. But when you get saved, you want to take the gospel to everybody. So they returned to Jerusalem, some of them, and many of them went preaching the gospel in many villages in Samaria. That's what revival do. You'll go to taking the gospel everywhere. everywhere. Amen. And you don't have to be preaching on Sunday morning in the church. Y'all catch this here, man. Amen. Praise God. I tell you, I, I thank God. I, I get a chance to preach outside the walls. Get you some gospel strike. Tell people about Jesus. And after you done planted a seed, that's all you could do. You can't save nobody. But when you plant a seed, that word go out. The Bible say the word w w won't do what? Return void. So that's so interesting that we saw this, praise God. They, 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 they went out 
they, 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 you know they were in the will of God because they were preaching in Samaria. Jesus had told them they're going to be witnesses of him in Jerusalem. Samaria. I mentioned when Jesus said that, some people said, man, we ain't going to Samaria. You know, we don't like them folks over there. But look at Jonah. Anybody read the book of Jonah? Jonah, know why Jonah got off the ship? He was prejudiced. Jonah was prejudiced. He didn't want to see them Ninevites get saved because Jonah knew God would save anybody. Jonah didn't mind preaching. He just didn't want to preach to the Ninevites. And that's the way some people are. But when you get saved, you want the gospel to go out to everybody. Amen. Amen. And then another point before we get off this here, praise God, they preached in many villages. Up, they went everywhere preaching. That, that. Now, now that, you may say many villages. Now, I'm going tell you something. Sometimes when you're around people who don't like you, you don't want to go in any place preaching unless God is what? With you. I remember when I was over in Southeast Asia doing 19... 72. I went way out in a little village on the Laotian border. I was out there by myself. I looked back and said, Lord, thank you for sparing my life. It was so far in the woods, I, was, I rode a bicycle about, it had to have been about 50 miles from the base. It was my day off. And I'm out there. I rode so far in the, in the, in the boonies, and they got a lot of bamboo sticks over there. And I went, came to this, this Buddhist monastery. And I'm out there, Lord God, you kept me. Oh, Lord, thank you. I'm out there 15 miles from Ubon Royal Thai Air Base talking to Buddhist monks. And they're out there with their leg crossed eating rice. And thank God they were listening to me. But I was right on the Vietnam border, the Laotian border. And, and it didn't dawn on me until about three, three or four years later that I could have lost my life over there. But God kept me. Hallelujah. Yeah. God kept me. And I was on a bicycle. On a bicycle. But God kept me. But I tell you what I who I saw over there when I was out there, I saw this is a true story. I mean it was way out I, it was way out there. I saw a white guy who had become a monk and he had on the orange garb and all that regalia. I said, "Where you from, man?" He said, "I'm from Washington DC." <laughs> but he was a monk. Amen. But long story short, I didn't go that far no more. I think the next week, the next week, intelligence came out and told us on all our personnel to stay away from the Laotian border because a lot of a few people was being, had gotten killed on that Laotian border, but God took care of this old dumb boy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, listen to me. Praise God. You know revival has come because people go to going everywhere telling the good news. Amen. Give me Isaiah 63, 7. Uh, Sister Tim, read that, Sister Thomas, for me. Isaiah 63, 7. Read that. Isaiah 63, 7. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed upon us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord. When you're going out preaching the good news, what you're going to talk about? You can't talk about yourself. You can tell what God did for you, but you're going to mention the what? Loving kindness of the Lord and praise the Lord according to all the Lord has done, bestowed on us, and his great goodness toward the house of Israel. Read on which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. So, so this is the good news. When we go out witnessing and preaching and telling people about God, we got a good topic to talk on. We could talk on the goodness and mercy of the Lord. We could tell people that Jesus loved them. We could tell people what he has done for us, praise God. And, and, and the last evidence that a revival has come, you'll go everywhere in little villages and him, even in some dangerous places. And you'll tell, but be careful, try to go out in twos. Don't do like I did, go out by yourself, praise God. I, I won't do that no more. I was about, what, I think I was about 20 or 21 back then. I done learned a little more then. Okay, now we're through with those, those, those uh, eight evidence eight evidence of revival. Now we're going to Acts chapter 9, 26, and we're moving on. Praise God. Acts chapter 9, 26. 8, 20, Acts chapter 8, 26. I'm sorry. 
Okay. Now, Philip, he was in Samaria, and now we move to uh, Acts 8 and, and 26. Uh, watch this here. Praise God. Now, he's he, he working good in Samaria, man. Philip, Philip, Philip in Samaria, praise God, he had, he had gotten a little following. People were saying, hey, Philip is the man. Philip had done enough stuff to put some posters up and let people know, man, look at all the wonderful stuff God has done through my ministry. Philip could have written a book about how God used him in Samaria. But watch this here now. Watch this here. Praise God. Now, this is going to shift, and our lesson is go. Our lesson is go tonight. Go. go. Read, Sister Thomas. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now, here he done, done this great work in Samaria. Now the Lord come to him and say, Philip, now, 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 an angel of the Lord came to him, say, Philip, arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down to Jerusalem. Now, I, I, I looked at that. I said, Lord, what you saying here? And the Lord spoke to him and said, many times we get comfortable where we are and we don't want to go on. I, I've heard, I literally heard people complain to me about not having nothing to do in the church. Y'all hear me? None of us should ever complain about not having nothing to do for God. Amen. I'll say that again. None of us should ever complain about not having anything to do for God. This church is just a dressing up room. We come in this church to build our muscles up to go back out there and do the work. Philip, Philip, Philip was doing some great stuff in Samaria, and God said, Philip, your work is done here, man. Amen. It's time for you to get up and go somewhere else. I never will forget this. In 19, here go a war story, but it's true. I, I'm not, y'all, this know how perfect. I'm not making this stuff up. We were, we were stationed in North Carolina, Marie and I. Marie was pregnant with, with Lena. And, and uh, you know, your first child, you want to be with your wife. And in 1974, if you know anything about Vietnam War, Vietnam War 74 was winding down, but it was still going on. Vietnam War didn't really officially stop the 75, and you know we got our troops out real fast. But in 74, I got orders to go. I had been over to Southeast Asia one time, and now they're sending me, I got orders to go back over there. I just got married. We got married in June of 73, and it, it looked like in January of 74, I get orders to go back overseas during the Vietnam War. And Marie, she was pregnant with Lena. And I was due to be over there in about April of 74. And I said, Lord, why are you sending me over, over to, I've been over there, Lord. I don't want to go back over there. No more. I'm, I'm, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm complaining. <laughs> My poor wife pregnant with our first child. And man, we were praying to God. I mean, we had everybody praying that we wouldn't have to leave North Carolina. Now, this is what was going on in North Carolina. We had started a Bible study, and they having that incident. We're having that 50-year Bible study reunion in September, and they called me to be the keynote speaker because it, that Bible study started in Marie and our living room. And, 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 and I said, Lord, you sent it. Why are you sending me back over here? My wife pregnant and all that. And, man, I was sort of, Lord, forgive me, I was sort of upset. Because I like to think we're doing a great work there. No, don't, honey, young people, I mean, on Saturday night, we'd have 125 people would show up at the base chapel, and we would just be ministering. We, we, we're witnessing in the street. We're doing a great work. And God gave me orders. I thought it was the devil back then. But I got orders to leave. Man, it was like heaven on earth. My little wife, our first child, we witnessing, man. We around a lot of Christians, man. We just having a good time, praising the Lord. We young, energetic. And I get orders to go back over. This time, I didn't go to Uban. I went to Karat. And I say, Lord, why are you sending? Lord, forgive me, but I said this. 
Lord, why are you sending me back over here? I done done my time. Spirit say go. So I never forget, I fought, I wrote Air Force headquarters, major match come and all that stuff. Guess what? They didn't cancel those orders. And I remember it was in April. I think I had to be over there in June. Remember y'all drove me to Kinston, North Carolina. We got on an Eastern Air, I got on Eastern Airlines and Marie out there pregnant with little Lena had a little baby, just a little small baby bump. And I'm peeping out the window waving at my wife with my lip poked out. And guess what? I went overseas. Man, all that fellowship, Brother Taylor. I mean, brother, we had it going on over there. Going to each other home, praying. We praying on the base. Man, we, we just on fire for God. Then God said, I'm going to see how, how on fire you are. I'm going to see how much power you got. You going back overseas, buddy. And I couldn't get out of that assignment. Well, guess what? In 1974, about May, I wind up in Karat, Thailand. Karat, Thailand. Never forget this. And I'm, I was so sad. And, and I, I, they flew me into Utapau, Thailand. That's on, on the beach, Patiok Beach over there in Southeast Asia. And I took a C-130 down to my base. And on the C-130, man, I'm just, I'm about to cry, man. I'm thinking about my poor wife having our first child. And Lord, I done been overseas one time doing your work. Now you're sending me back over there. And I'm on, the, I'm on a C-130 airplane flying from, from Utapau, Thailand, down to Karat. And it was three guys. It was a white guy, a Mexican, and a black guy. And I'm on that plane with my head down, thinking about my poor wife and all that. And one of the guys say, what's up, brother? And he threw his hand up like this. You know, back in the, in, in the 70s, they had this. Y'all know what that means, right? Jesus, one way. And I was down, I was down, I was down. When that guy threw his hand up one way, I say, brother, are you a Christian? He said, yeah, man, we got it going on over here. That's all to lift my spirits, even though I still was missing my wife. I get to my duty station over there. And, I, you know, you sign in, you process in the base and everything. And about three weeks later, the head, the installation chaplain, that's the head chaplain on the base, he called me in his office. He said, now, man, I'm only about, about 22 now. And I couldn't preach my way out of a wet paper towel. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't a good preacher. I, I, didn't have, I was just a minister, Nick. The head chaplain called me in his office. He said, uh, Sergeant Thomas, and I, had, I was just a little sergeant. I was a buck sergeant. I had three little stripes. He said, Sergeant Thomas, somebody told me you were a preacher. <laughs> I said, sir, I'm, I'm like a, in the Air Force, you know, when you work on airplanes and things, they give you your skill level. And, and uh, they had a three level, a five level, a seven level, and a nine level. A three level mean you just got out of school. And I say, ch I say chaplain, I say, I'm just a three level. I, I say, I'm just a baby preacher. He said, that's good enough. We want you to start a gospel service over here. And I didn't hardly know John from Peter, man. And he wanted me to start a gospel service over there. I learned one thing, don't ever turn down an assignment for the Lord. I say, sir, I'll try. I mean, and, and I never will forget this. I think I preached my first sermon in June of 1974. And we had a crowd at the church. I don't think the sermon was the best, but we had a crowd. Then I preached another one in July. Then I was getting ready, I would preach a sermon every month. And I was getting ready to preach in August, in August, and President Nixon, he began to de-escalate the troops from Southeast Asia. Now I was, I was in, a, in an outfit called the 552nd Early Warning Airborne Outfit that it was the forerunner of AWACS. We, we, we fly around to see how to keep planes from getting shot down. And I had just got in country. I'd only been in country about three or four months. Guess what? Marie, you don't remember this, but Kathy Reffin called you and told you, say, Kathy was a southern girl from uh, South Carolina. Her friend Jim Reffin was my best friend. And she talked this, this. She called Marie and said, Marie, tell Roger he may be coming home. <laughs> and Marie told me, you know, they didn't have internet. Marie said, she wrote me and said, Roger, Kathy said, you all me. I said, honey, I'm just getting in country. 
I said, I, I done done, I've done three months. I got about nine more months to go. Guess what? President Nixon began to de-escalate the troop, and my squadron was one of the first squadrons to leave. I, I went over there and preached two sermons, <laughs> two sermons, and God blessed me to come home. And, and I got, I think I got home in August of 74, and, 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 and I was able to be home to see my first daughter born. Yes. Amen. Many times God will tell you to do something. You may not understand it, but when he say go, just say go. Say yes to the Lord, man. Yes. Say yes to the Lord. Yes. Praise God. Amen. And, and, and I look back on that, praise God, because I thought I was going to be able because I wasn't planning on coming home. You know, you, at six months you could come home, but I, we didn't have money like that. But, but, but God just told Philip, he said, the angel came to Philip, say, Philip, the Lord spoke, say, arise and go toward the south. Now, Philip had it going on in Samaria. He was the man. He was the man. But God told him to go. Amen? And guess what? He obeyed the Lord. A lot of times we get churches and things, and man, no, this is, this is my home, man. And I, I, Dad Caldwell told you, told me you gave up a few churches, didn't you? See? And now, God hasn't told me to leave Friendly Temple yet. All right? <laughs> he hasn't told me to leave Friendly Temple yet. Really, he hasn't. Amen? But, but I thank God. <laughs> so they all say, first lady ain't going. Amen. I guess I left her. I guess she, she you know. But, but this is the deal. This is the deal. Watch this. Watch this here. This man, he could have rebelled and done a lot of things. But guess what? He heard the Lord. Yes. When the Lord said, arise and go toward the south, the way that goes down from Jerusalem through the desert. He didn't even go on the main highway. He went through the desert. Amen. Now, this is so important that we hear this because uh, 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 Philip was doing great. He was a deacon. But sometimes your ministry will be done in one place. That don't mean God tell none of y'all to leave for in the temple. <laughs> Amen. But sometimes people try to hold on to certain jobs forever in the church. Sometimes God may have used you for a season, and after he've used you for that season, just say, Lord, what, 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 what other assignment you want me to, to have? And, so, and some of our churches, we become very territorial, amen? But we got to say yes to the will of the Lord. Now, 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 now watch this, watch this, watch this. It's so important. Matthew 22, 9. Read that, Sister Thomas, for, for, for Bishop, please. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Okay, read on. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Now, we could, we could get into that, but th this is the good news, praise God. There is literally so much work for us to, go, uh, us to do. Don't ever think, man, I tell you, if anybody hearing me, YouTube and Facebook, I think the devil is speaking through you when you say you don't have nothing to do. Literally, the other day, uh, I was out, and I don't, I'm not saying this to brag because I'm telling some of y'all probably work way harder than I do, but I went to uh, a Desert Nose West uh, convalescent home to see uh, Sister Betty. That's, that's, that's Nurse Stewart's sister. And I went to see Sister Betty, and, and I got in there, and when I, I guess I got this heavy voice, and a lot of people went to coming around. So we went to singing. And man, we went to singing, and, and they went to laughing. Man, that was so, oh, I had such a good time. And the director of the nursing people, they, they sent news by Nurse, uh, Nurse Stewart last week, say, when your pastor coming back out here? <laughs> what I'm saying is there's always something to do for the Lord. Yeah. Do y'all hear me? I, I'm not talking about just, just, just what we used to call busy work. Uh, you know, when Sister Thomas used to want me to get out the house and get off her nerves, you know, sometimes, when I, especially when I first retired, you know, I'd be telling her, no, baby, now if you're going to cook, you got to put a little more black pepper in it. And, <laughs> and, and I'm retired. I, don't, I didn't have a job then. And she said, Roger, why don't you go outside and just pull a few, no, I'm, I'm sort of fixing this up, pull a few leaves off the rose bushes or something. <laughs> go, out, go, out, go out and, 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 and pull some weeds or something just to get me out the house. But, but that was just busy work to get me out of her hair. But let me tell you something. There's some real work out there that need to be done, Mother Wade. 
Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. There's some people that stay, later, brothers, God telling you, get up and, 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 go, and go get some coffee. And, and you think, man, Lord, I don't want to go get some coffee because God may want to strategically put you out of place to tell somebody about Jesus. Go, uh, told his servant, uh, uh, a servant went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found. Amen. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, those in you. It's some people out here who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. yes, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, say, Lord, anoint me, Lord, anoint me. To, say yes to say yes to your will. To your will. Watch this. Go to Matthew, uh, Matthew 419, Sister Thomas. Uh, Sister Tim, get Matthew 419. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So listen, when you, the angel came to Philip and said, Philip, time to leave. Could I, could I fix this up? Can you imagine how popular Philip was there in Samaria? I, I believe men, men and women say, Philip, come over to my house, man. We want to we wanna feed you, brother. You the one led me to the Lord. You did all these great things. Come on, Philip. Come and eat with us. Philip was popular because he had, God had used him to help bring people out of sin. Philip could have stayed as a mayor for the rest of his life. He could have been fat, dumb, and happy. But just when things began to look good for Philip, they didn't say, Philip, arise and go. And guess what? Let's go to verse 27, says Thomas. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 8, 27. Is that? Doom, 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 doom. Excuse me, Sister Tim. Sister Tim, doom, doom. Acts chapter 8, verse 27. Uh, and I, I can read. Oh, thank you, Sister And he Tim. arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Read. Was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Read. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? Mm -hmm. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear. Mm -hmm. So, read. in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Read. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Now, now watch this here. Watch this here. In 27, it says this. It says, and, and, and when the Lord told Philip to go, he arose and went, and as he went, he saw a man of Ethiopian. Now, this, this, this brother, this Ethiopian, he was a eunuch. Now, there are three, there's three types of eunuch, you know. A eunuch is someone normally by operation someone who is castrated mm -hmm. uh, their testicles has literally been removed right. amen and they have no desire for, for for to be with the opposite sex mm -hmm. and then there's there's a, a unit uh, and I'm, I'm thinking of two in particular there, 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 there's a unit uh, a spiritual unit somebody who has become so dedicated to God mm -hmm. praise God that 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 they want nothing to do with the opposite sex they become asexual mm -hmm. okay now, this man was a unit. Now, I don't know whether he was a, 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 a physical unit, had been castrated, or I don't know whether he was a, 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 a unit uh, who, who, who just had sold out, but he was somebody big over there in Africa, Ethiopia. Now, let me tell you something, and this is something uh, some of our 
uh, 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 many, many of the white commentaries, white writers and all haven't written about, some of them has. God has used the black man in scripture mightily, Amen. mightily. Some people believe, you remember when the Queen of Sheba mm -hmm. came to hear Ta Solomon and Solomon showed her all the things God had blessed him to do. And she said, and, and she went back and said, I saw his great kingdom, but what? The half has been told. Some people believe that she went back with the entourage and she told her people about God and about the things of God. And, and many of them began to turn toward Judaism. Now, I'm, I'm treating this mildly, but what I'm trying to say is God, there were people who were involved in Judaism from Africa. Even right now, there's a lot of black Jews, just black Jews. Now, uh, but they were scattered abroad. Now, this is what I do. We'll say what about the black Hebrews, and I'm not doing justice on this. There are black Jews. Right. Amen? Right. And, and, and they are persecuted just like some blacks in this country. But, but, but my point is, praise God, this particular uh, uh, man Praise God, he was a great man. If you read the text, it says, praise God, he was with great authority. Y'all see that? See that word, great authority? Under Candace. Now, what was Candace? Candace Queen. Candace is, is, is a term like president or like pharaohs, okay? Like uh, pharaoh, uh, when Moses was on his, his name was Ramses, but he was the pharaohs. He was the leader of the country. Uh, our president, we say our president. Our president is who? Biden. So Candace is a title for a queen that was over the country. So he, he had great authority on the, the leader of the country, Candace Queen of Ethiopia. So this man, praise God, he had gone, no doubt, to Jerusalem for some of the Passover, for some of the feasts. This guy had traveled all the way from Africa to, to Israel, which really is not, is a good little piece, but the continent of Af Africa is connected to Israel if you read the map. He had gone all the way over there for the Passover and, and uh, for, for some great feast, I believe it was the Passover, and they traveled by horse and buggies and stuff like that. So they didn't travel uh, great distances in a day or two like we do. They probably was gone for how long? Months. And, and, and he was under great authority. He probably was one of the descendants of Ham. Amen. And, 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 and who had charge over all the treasure. This man was, he was, he was the man, he was like uh, Janice Yellen, uh, well, she's, she's, the federal, uh, she's the chairman of the Federal Reserve, uh, he, but he was more powerful, I guess, than, than our, 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 our Secretary of Treasury. He was a powerful brother. And, 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 and he was a black man. He probably was black as my shoes. Praise God. But guess what? God loves everybody. So God told Philip to get up. Now, it's so important that we said when the angel came to Philip, say, Philip, I don't want you to go the main road. I want to take the back road. Right. Sometimes when God tells you to go a certain way, just do it the way God say do it. Who had charge over all the treasure and, and, and worship uh, and had come to Jerusalem to worship uh, uh, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was worshiping probably during one of the feast days because people came to Jerusalem doing Passover and all from all over. All right? So that's going to show you, man, God uh, was working through the descendants of, 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 of Ham, Sham, and Japhethus. Paul was, was of the descendants of Ham, uh, 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 Sham, and, and the, the, the uh, 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 Japanese brother, Japheth. God, Jesus died for the world. And if you, when we're going to see this in Acts, we're going to see how different races of people came to know God. Now here is an Ethiopian, uh, a unit, a man with great authority who served the president, or Candace is just like the president. Okay? Now, go... Praise God. And, and this man there. Now, watch this. Let's move on. Read on, Sister Thomas. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Now, let me, let me share this here. I don't care who you are. If you seek God, you're going to find God. That's right. That's Bible, Bishop. This guy had to have had faith, Mother Wade, because he had traversed all the way from Africa to, to Jerusalem for the Passovers. Now, you don't hear a lot about black people in the scripture, but we all in there. 
and we taught y'all, a few of y'all done read it, uh, who helped bore Jesus' cross? Black man. And that goes to show you, man, God don't care nothing about race. God love everybody. Hello. Now, watch this here. Watch this here. Uh, praise the Lord. Get me Hebrews 11, 6, because if you seek God by faith, God going to reward your faith. Read that, Sister Thomas. But without faith, it Hold is... It. But without faith... Read. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I don't care who you are. If you start seeking God and believe that you're going to find him, guess what? You're going to find him. Y'all see the word impossible? Take that. I am and separated from the possible and put a put a, 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 a what do you call that apostrophe between I and am now separate the I am I'm possible when you got faith in God you're possible you're possible all things are possible to him that believe this man was in Jerusalem. He had traveled that way. He was looking for something. He could have said, oh, I ain't going to the Passover this, this year because nothing ain't happening. But that brother probably went to the Passover several years. Man, that was some traveling back then. And the Bible say, you can't please God. Nothing going to be possible unless you have what? Amen. Now, now, saints, how many believe God reward faith? I believe that. He says, impossible to please him, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must what? Believe. Anybody came to him today? Did you believe? Anybody believe in him for something? I just believe God going to do it. Come on, say, I'm possible. It's possible for me. I'm possible. I don't care how bad it looks, it's a possibility when you come to God by faith. This man traveled. Well, now, now, when you put your faith in action, you'll go to doing whatever you got to do to get to God. Get up early in the morning and pray. Praise God. You'll come to church. You'll go like Philip went. See, you got to, you got to activate your faith. You got to work faith, man. You want faith to work, you got to work faith. Your hand was up. Oh, I thought you had to thank God for Sister Lorraine. Now, now, now watch this here. This brother, a black man, he was working his faith. Now, he didn't know what he was doing, but he's working his faith and traveled all the way from Africa. He was a big shot to Jerusalem for the Passover, working his faith. It says, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Saint, when you praying and seeking God and the devil tell you God won't, just separate that impossible. Just separate I am possible. I don't care what it looked like. Keep your faith in God. Don't let nothing. Y'all hear me tonight? I don't care what you feel like. I am possible. I don't care what it looked like. I am possible. All things are possible. To him that believe. Amen. But you got to work your faith. And there sometimes when you're working, look like the look like the sickness will try to come back on you. But you keep on going. Come look at the text. For he he must uh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, he is. and that he is what? Reward. Man, if you seeking God by faith, God gonna reward you, Sister Thomas. Yes. Chip up on you, say surprise. Yes, yes sir. You heal. Surprise. Yes. Your children are, are blessed. Surprise. Surprise. Now turn that thing around in your finances, praise God. Come on, say, I am possible. I am possible. A rewarder to them that diligent. Now diligent means you got to put something in it. This man traveled all the way from Africa to Jerusalem. He was looking for something. Remember, Abraham left his home, look, went looking for a city. He didn't even know where it at, but he walking on faith. Man, when God tell you to go, just get up and go. This Ethiopian, this black man, 
Now, God, God, see, what I love about the Bible, the Bible, you don't use black people, white people, Jewish people. God ain't got no respect to person. Hello? Larry, the God love everybody. I wish I had three people say, I am possible. My healing is possible. My children are going to be saved. Devil say, oh, they've been like that a long time. Then the devil is a liar. God can turn anything around. Amen. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Oh, you just got to work your faith. Sometimes when it's going bad, but you give God a praise on credit, saying hallelujah anyhow. Amen. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Keep on walking, praise God. Keep on thanking God. The devil whispered in your ear, say, no, nothing ain't going to turn around. But the Bible say he is a rewarder yeah. to them that diligently yeah. seek him. Yeah. Oh, I came all the way from Africa, but Lord, I'm looking for something. Yeah. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible because with God, yeah. all things are possible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes you're hurting in your body, but you're going on. Because yeah. God has given us the promise, praise God, you're possible. But he said he's a rewarder. Yeah. And here this, this guy all the way over there in Jerusalem from Africa. Got all that power. But God will reward you for your effort. Sometimes you come in the church and don't feel like it. Sometimes you're crying and nobody ain't bothering you. Praise God. Sometimes sometime you feel like giving up, but some say go ahead. Because the Bible says he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Oh, praise God, but you got to work your faith. When the enemy say stop, keep on going. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the darkness, because don't you know if God be for you, who could be against you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Mark Morrell say, that's all right when God watch your boat. Don't worry about it because Jesus is in the boat with you, praise God. And how many know if God be for you, who could be against you? Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm possible. Here's the reward to them that diligently seek him. Sometime late in the midnight hour, he'll come to you and touch you. All you're doing is waiting on your blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, my blessing is on the way. I already got it by faith, but I'm waiting on my blessing to come. Faith is the title deed that what you want from God, you already got it. Some of you own your homes. Some of you own your homes outright. I'm still paying on mine. Now, I got a grant deed. I can stay there, but I don't have the title deed on it. But by faith, by faith, you got the title deed to your house. You own your house outright. People say, how you know you got here, 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 here's the deed to my house. Hope you got it recorded. And guess what? That healing you want, by faith, you got the title deed to it. You waiting on a blessing for your children, you got the title deed to it. But guess what? He's going to reward those that seek him. I'm looking for a miracle. Praise God. This black brother came all the way from Africa. He had probably done that several years. He on his way back home, praise God. But guess what? He's trying to seek God. Now, 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 this thing take a twist. So, time go, 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 go to verse. Uh, 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 let me, let me throw this here. Read Saint John fourteen six, Sister Thomas. Saint John fourteen six. Hallelujah. You preach that today, Larry. Jesus I'll, said unto him, uh -huh. "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father." But by me. Now listen, listen, listen. What I love this here, Jesus has given us an avenue, every man, an avenue to God through Jesus. I don't care what nationality you is or you are, no man come to God but through Jesus. And this Ethiopian unit is looking. Now, 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 Sister Thomas, go, 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 go read, read the next verse. Verse, I think we're, we're on verse, verse what? 20, 20, go to 28. 
Read verse 28, baby. 28. Yeah. I tell you what. Thank you, Larry. I feel that uh, uh, Acts chapter 8, 20, is it slow since Tillman? Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Now, now, now he, he, he's on his way back home. And on his way back home, he reading the Bible. Now, all they had was the Old Testament scrolls then. But he's doing what he know. Guess what? That's seeking the Lord. A lot of people say, well, I ain't going to church because I don't feel it. You know, the time that you got to press the heart is when you don't feel it. The time you got to press the heart is when that pain hitting your body, the devil telling you what God won't do. You got to tell that devil he's a liar, praise God. Because the Bible doesn't say he's going to reward those that seek him. Hello, thank you, Jesus. Mm, praise God. Give, give me 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Watch this, watch this. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Say this. Read this, Sister Tom. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Hallelujah. Uh, there, that, Sister Tim, that thing's slow tonight because that devil, he's mad. 2 <laughs> Corinthians 5. That's all right. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now listen, 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 listen. When you're seeking God, you got to walk. What do you mean walk by faith? We live by faith. Amen. Not by what you feel, not by what you see, because I'm possible. Praise God. We walk by faith and not by what? Sight. You better watch what come out of your mouth when you believe in God. Yes. Don't let no negative come out your mouth. Say, oh, Lord, God, I don't believe you're going to do it. This thing going to kill me. That old child just like his devil. This cold, this cold going to take me to my grave. You better watch stuff like that. That boy never ain't going to be, never going to be any good. Praise God. You better watch, man. Our words are, 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 are like seeds. They got life and death in our words. Amen. Praise God. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And let me tell you something. You watch what you say when you're too happy, and you watch what you say when you're sad. Amen. So Tom will know how to get me sometimes. She'll get me real good and happy. And I go to making promises. <laughs> Amen. And then she'll say, you said it. I said, I sure did, didn't I? Amen. I sure did, baby. Yeah. I tried to back up. She said, you said it. Okay. But let me tell you something. Watch your words. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I don't care how, what you feel, what you're going to come on and say, Lord God, I'm, I'm possible. I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my blessing. I thank you for victory. Because we walk by faith. And, and sometimes people say, man, nothing ain't happening. Saints, I could stand here tonight and tell you that God will show up when you least suspect it. Yeah. Oh, you already, now you already got the title deed. You already got it by faith. But God will let that thing manifest in your body, manifest in your child's life. Don't you give up on God. Yeah. Why, why do you think the Bible says they that wait on the Lord? Yeah. He shall renew your strength. You'll mount up. Yes, Wings like he's running, not be weary, walking not. But you got to wait on it. Yes. What about say, be not weary and well doing? Yes. And come on, come on. So mother, 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 wait, you trying to tell me there's four season, autumn, spring, summer, winter, and due season? Yes. How many know if you wait on God, you got a due season? Yes. Praise God. And we know what kind of time he work on. God doesn't work on chronos by the clock, the watch, the calendar. God work on a time called kairos. Praise God, that due season. Just in the nick of time. Just when, just when you think, praise God, I don't know when, he'll show up and say, whoop, there it is. Hallelujah. Remember, I've been, I've been suffering in my body with a terrible back condition. I had that side of nerve so bad. Marie, didn't I? Couldn't go to church or nothing. And it looked like I had to get in the bed and drop in the feet and take a shower. Go, 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 get out the shower and dry off in the bed. And, oh, that thing was so bad. About, about over 15 or 20 years ago. And one night I went to bed and about 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 or 4 o'clock. Uh, and Marie used to be my heating bad heater. I didn't have an electric heating bad. I had one of them microwave heat, 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 heating pads. 
and she'll take it and she, she had heated and had gotten cold by three in the morning and look like something say go go put it back I ain't want to break up sister Thomas she was she would have done it for me I, I said I, I don't know I was in a trance or stuff some say you go put your heating pad in the microwave and I remember this and I walked in from my bedroom to the microwave with the heating pad right. now I couldn't walk before I went to bed I get at the microwave door 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 of the microwave, I open the door and the Holy Spirit say, look at you. Look at you. you healed. Yes. And saints, I've had backaches, but I never suffered from outside of nerve sense. Yes. Won't he do it? Yes. But you got to walk with the Lord by faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Ethiopian unit, he traveled all the way from Africa to, 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 to Jerusalem. But he was searching for something. Yes. And, and, and in Acts chapter chapter. Uh, 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 828 it says uh, 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 he was returning and sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet amen praise God he was reading the book of Isaiah the prophet and and, 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 and you can read that we ain't got time to go through it. Isaiah 53 verse 7 and 8 praise God and 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 then praise God 29 says Thomas then the what then the spirit said unto Philip Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Now, God had told Philip to leave Samaria and intersect with this Ethiopian eunuch. Yes. Listen to me. God need people to explain his word to other people. Amen. You can't understand the word. This man was very intelligent. He wasn't no dummy. But the only way you can understand the things of God, somebody. Somebody. Have to help open the scripture up to you. Yes, Hello. Yes, when you catch people out there in the world don't know God talking about the church, you shouldn't even get upset about that. Amen. They don't know the Lord. Amen. If they knew the Lord, they wouldn't be talking about the church. Amen. So Philip done left Samaria, but he got this assignment with this Ethiopian unit. This is a very important assignment. Because history tells us this man went back and started many churches over in the continent of Africa. Join thyself to his chariot. Then the spirit said, Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot. I don't think Philip came up there acting like he knew it all, Deacon Gibson. No, no. Go, go, go to verse 30, Sister Thomas. Help me now. Read. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Now he didn't go up there, such a bitch out, say, Let me teach you something, man. But when you're trying to help people, you got to humble yourself and come across and, and let them know that you love them and that you're not a big shot, but the same God save you could save them. He say, understand what you're reading? Now, Philip probably knew that man didn't understand it, but he didn't want to make the man feel less than anything. Amen? Amen. He say, understand what you're reading? It's a lot of people come to church. They don't know what we know. I learned this from Sister Pastor Corey. I mean, we talked about it, I knew it. He said, Dad, we shouldn't ever assume that people know things in the Bible like we know it. Sometimes I'll be pretty, y'all know the story. Everybody don't know the story, Mother Wade. Everybody don't know Jesus died on the cross. You say, they don't know it. And the only way you and I know it, the Holy Spirit blessed us to know it. Amen. Amen. Hello? Because if we really knew it, we would have got saved when we, were, when we first heard it. No, right. But you can have a head knowledge and not a heart knowledge. Right. Hello? He said, Philip ran, Philip ran. Now, it, it, this, this great deacon got a great work in Samaria. He done went on the backside traveling through the desert to meet this man. And when he saw him, Holy Ghost said, this your assignment, Phil. I need you to help this boy. Someone say, well, that ain't nothing but one man. I want to help a lot of people. <laughs> that one man went back to Africa and did some great works Amen. because Philip explained Amen. the way to him. Amen. Don't ever despise an assignment. That's why I thank God for being a bishop in the Church of God in Christ. But could I tell y'all the truth? I'm not hung up on no bishop title. I thank God for being a bishop, but being a bishop ain't going to get me into heaven. Amen. Being saved is going to get me into heaven. Amen. 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 Now, while in this church, I don't want y'all standing up when I'm y'all pastor. I know the convocation, y'all stand up, but listen to me. Praise God. 
I thank God for being saved. And I, I tell you with understanding, you're supposed to respect your leaders. Amen. But a leader should have enough, enough sense not to let a title go through his head. Amen. I don't care who you don't let a title go through your head. Amen. You want people to respect you, but you don't want them to act like people got to bow down to you like you all that in a bag of chips. I'm Bishop so and so. So? I'm Brother so and so. So that make us brothers, Bishop so and so. Well, let's keep it real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some people are too hung up on titles. And to you, you hear me, you're supposed to respect your leader. Now, don't, don't get the big head. But the leader, the leader should have a, a baby if people don't respect him and bow down to him. Don't, don't cut the fool. Well, you didn't bow down to me. Well, did you pray for me? Yeah, I pray. Well, I thank God for the prayer. Hello. If you ever been on a military base, I'm going to tell you something. Doctors and pilots, them some of the most educated people on most bases, a doctor, you go to the hospital, you try to salute, a doctor's off, you try to salute, doctor said, man, don't just look me. And the pilots, they like to fly. Now, you have to salute them, but they, 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 you, you salute them, you, they, say, they just walk on like, because they're not hooked on rank. And I've seen colonels like that. But them little, old, them little officers that don't have big jobs, <laughs> them little officers that want to be big shots, Baby, if you don't salute, <laughs> they'll write you up. But I, I, salute, I salute officers. But what I'm saying is we shouldn't let titles go through our head. We should respect our, and I thank God for y'all, y'all respect me mightily. But I'm not just, just living just to get praise of man. I, really, I appreciate y'all. But listen to me. Philip ran to him, and he asked him what he was reading. Now, this is so crucial, saints. Because God want to use us where he put us. God want to use us where our assignments are. Don't get upset because you don't have some grandiose assignment. Be thankful for the assignment you got. How many souls got saved at the funeral today? Probably 30. 30 people. 30 got saved? How many got accepted Christ? They all raised their hands. Okay, well, you prayed the prayer of faith. Prayed the prayer of faith. Now, 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 he, he did a funeral today. Man, that was a great Amen. evangelistic tool. Amen. Amen. And, and we can learn something from Philip. Philip had it going on right, right. in Samaria, but God moved him. God. And when he moved him, when he saw the Ethiopian, the Bible did the Bible, and Philip ran thither. Get that in the New Living, Sister Tillman. I got to get out of here, Lord God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Y'all better catch this here. Get that in New Living. Read, baby. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? Okay, go, go, go back, go back. Okay, now, now. He asked him, did you understand? The man didn't understand it. Amen. Go, 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 uh, uh, go, 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 go to verse 31. The man replied, how can I, unless someone instructs me? And uh, he, read, I'm sorry. And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. No one in most, there are some exceptions to what I'm about to say. No one can understand the things of God number one, without the Holy Spirit illuminating their minds. And secondly, not many people could understand Scripture unless they have Bible teachers and people to help them understand. And even if they understand, sometimes God could, could send a word through a Bible teacher or a preacher called a rhema word. Now, a rhema word is a word, R, a rhema, R-H-E-M-A, how do you say rhema? R-H-E-M-A. A rainbow word is when God speaks to your heart. You know it. You've you read it millions of times. But when God speaks that word to your heart and that word grip your spirit. In other words, that word, you know it, but the word, you may have heard of the thousand, but that word goes straight into your spirit. Right, right, right. That's why we come to church every Sunday. Yeah. Amen. So. We don't come to church, I done heard, I done heard this time. He done preached that sermon five times. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you know, it may be rainbow this time. Right. Hello? 
<laughs> what, what, that, and where it all going to come from? So. Sister Thomas used to make tuna salad. Man, I tell you, that lady knows she can make tuna salad. But sometime her tuna salad was better than other times. That's good all the time. But so I said, say, girl, what you put in this tuna? She said, I used the same recipe. I don't know what, but it was, looked like it was better. And, 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 and she said the same thing. I don't know. But, but that's the way the word is. Sometimes you can come to church and God will send a word, and that word will jump off the pages straight into your heart. I wish I had somebody to say thank you, Jesus. And guess what? All you need is one word from God to get your healing. One word for God to get your breakthrough. One, for, one word for God to bless your home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, 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 now look, 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 look at this here. He said, how can I know if there's some man that is say some angel? God used men. Now, what if Philip had stayed in Samaria? God could have used somebody else, but God wanted to use who? Philip. And saints, listen, y'all catch those of you too. When God reassigned you, just like he re reassigned me from North Carolina, I mean, we had it going on in Carolina, boy. And I was one of the leaders. The Bible study started in Marie and our home. And just when, praise God, things getting good, I get orders to go to back overseas to Southeast Asia. But God knew what he was doing. Y'all yeah. remember Paul Harvey say, and now the rest of, the, I can't tell y'all the rest of the story. I tell y'all again, I got to say something for the next time I'm teaching. <laughs> 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 Praise God. Sister, Sister Thomas say, she say, Roger, you tell the same old stories all the time. <laughs> God bless you, baby. Okay, go, go, go to verse 32. We about, we about out of here. Praise, go, go to verse 32. Read. <laughs> The place, the place of the Y'all laughing because y'all probably done caught on to it too. I know y'all have. I know y'all have. Praise God. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Now he was reading in Isaiah where? 53, verse 7 and 8. Because they had the Old Testament back then, right? But he's reading about, who is he reading about? Jesus. Jesus. But he didn't understand that because he had left a Jewish feast. And guess what? A lot of those Jews were still keeping the Passover in the way of Jesus and the way of the Jews. And they was fighting who? They were still, some of them Jews were still fighting Jesus. So they weren't going to teach him. But see, God saw this man hard. And he sent Philip all the way from Samaria. He said, Philip, take a shortcut. Go, go through the desert. Right. Lord, I want to go through the desert, Lord. I want to go on 15. I want to stay on I-15. <laughs> go through the desert. <laughs> Lord, why I got to go through the desert, Philip? <laughs> it's hard in it. Go through the desert, Philip. <laughs> and sometimes God will send you through the desert that you can intersect with somebody. Amen. Do y'all hear me tonight? And, and, and saints, listen, if y'all don't get nothing else out of here, when God give you assignment, yes, yes, yes. thank God for that assignment because it's a, it's, it's a method to the madness you think you're going through. Y'all hear me? Yes. Praise God. Deacon Gibson moved up here in 19. What, what year you got up here? Eight, eight, 98. 98. We were trying to build this church in 99. Deacon Gibson and them had just built the church down in Watts, right? Yes. And that's a beautiful church. And I know you and Mama Gibson, the uh, uh, other Mother Gibson was tired of building because you, you played a, a vital role in that church. Yes, I did. And he get up here, I know the man done retired. I know he want to kick back. <laughs> and we struggling trying to get this church going. And Deacon Gibson came up here, went to bring his tools, his water holes, and, and then we had to go down and talk to the contractor two or three times. And I can imagine... The enemy telling you, say, man, I thought that this stuff was history. But God say, go up there and help Thomas them. I, I was happy to do it, Pastor. I know you were. And, and you, made, you made a difference too, brother. God bless your soul. Because y'all had built. You, you know what to say to the contractor. But God had to send him up here to help. 
Man, when God leading you, we got to learn to say yes to the Lord. Yes. I'm telling you, man. When I, one more Air Force joke. I may not tell y'all nothing. I'm about through. That's all right. That's all right. I used to pray for two things in the Air Force. This is no hyperbole, no exaggeration. I say, Lord, don't ever let me work on a B-52 bomber. I used to, Lord, please don't let me work on a B-52. Anybody ever seen a B-52? The fuselage, I know I told y'all this one last week, but <laughs> the fuselage looks like from the front door to that wall. And the wings is about from, go all across our parking lot. Now, probably a little, little less. And, and boy, I, I went, I, I, I studied on that a little bit when I was in tech school, and, and we had to crawl through it. And look like I wasn't gonna ever get, I said, and I ain't seen nothing but big old wire bundles, big old, and I'm an electrician. I said, I don't wanna work on this. Then my next prayer was, Lord, please don't ever let me get stationed in California. <laughs> And I went 16 years, guess what? They never sent me to California. My last four years, my boss called me and said, Roger, he didn't say sorry, John. Roger, get in here. Chief, what you want now? Guess where you going? My heart went to be. You going to Victorville, California, jackrabbits, uh, Joshua trees, and man, I wanted to cry. My mother was living, I called my mama. My mama said, Roger, I bet they sent him to California because my mama, she, she needed me. I thought she did. Then I called the first lady. I said, honey, I wasn't crying now. I, I wasn't crying, I was a man. <laughs> I say, Marie, guess where they sending us? She said, where? California. Yay, hurting again, yay, Disneyland, Magic Mountain, not very fun. They just having a good time. But guess what? God needed me here. All right. Amen. Going on 35 years later, Amen. this is one of the best assignments I ever had. Amen. They done closed the base down, but we still here. God knew what when he said go. Just say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. And don't ever complain about not having nothing to do. There's a lot to do. Look at Cogwell. Man done preached over fifth pastor church 40 for. 50-something years and come and just help. Amen. Amen. Dr. Ely, just a prayer warrior. Thank God people like Sister Guy, Mother Wade, Sister Byrona. Sister Byrona had illnesses in her body. Still pressing on. Still pressing And God said, uh-oh, Byrona, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> Whoops! Doing COVID. She got a kidney doing COVID. If you seek God and faithful to God, the Bible says, they that wait on the Lord, he shall yes. renew your strength. You are mounted up with wings like an eagle. Run and not be weary. Walk. Yes, but you got to wait on him. Come here, Philip. Get in the back. Go to Desert and meet that Ethiopian. He needs you to teach him something. People could say, but Lord, I'm doing, no, don't worry about Samaria. I got people going to every village in Samaria. I want you to witness to this one man. One man. And let me tell you something, saints. When God give you a sign, man, don't complain about it. Remember Sister Magna. Sister Magna was ill, came here sick. Her mother, Sister Marilyn, say, Bishop, I don't want to bring her here because, Sister Magna, I'm not picking at you, but when you were here, you used to be looking in space. You're like a zombie, but your mama, you always respect that lady. Deacon Gibson, her mama brought her and kept up under the word. And look at her now. Doing the work of God. Oh, hallelujah! When God say go, just go. You, you can't figure God out. Isaiah 40, 28, I love that verse. Isaiah 40, 28, read that, so something help this old man out. <laughs> 28. 28. Isaiah 40, 28. 28. Hallelujah. 28. <laughs> Has thou not known? Now, 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 Israel in captivity, they're coming out. But they're in captivity. I, God, I, God speaking to them. Say, hast thou not known? 
Reese's Thomas. Has that not heard? Yes. That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Listen, 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 listen. I don't care how smart you are. You ain't smart as God. You don't know how God gonna bless you, and you don't know when. Oh, you when God say go, you better just do what He tell you to do. Yes. Cause while you going, God may say surprise, there go your healing. Yes. Surprise that child being blessed. But if you try to wait and figure God out, you'll mess your blessing up. Yes. Lord, I'm waiting on you to come through this door. Lord, I'm just waiting on you. And you sitting down waiting on God to come through that door. Ain't no searching of God understanding. God may come through that door. He may come through the air-conditioned bitch. What you want to do is just go. Just go. Just go. Philip, Philip left. He didn't say, look here, y'all. God, I'm doing a great work. Now, Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. Philip didn't say that. Philip obeyed the spirit and went. Yes. Come here, Mother Wade. You've been helping your grandchildren and doing all that. And I know you tired, but I want you to be a Bible band teacher. Yeah. Mother Wade went and bought every book in town. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Wade say, Bishop, what kind of book is this? Mother Wade, I ain't got that one in my library. It must be pretty good. <laughs> Teach it. When God say go, just go. But I don't feel like it. Man, if you got the limp, just go. Just go. Praise God. There's a blessing in obedience. Yes, there ain't no searching of God's understanding. Man, God will tip up on you and say, surprise. Yes. There go your healing, but you got to be about the Lord's been. Philip just up and left. They got some, uh, I, 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 I'm saying this, uh, uh, down in Florida, they fighting over a church. The pastor died and uh, the, uh, the son and the uncle, it's the man brothers fighting over a church, all on YouTube and Facebook. And guess what? The pastor wanted his brother to take the church over for a season. The son just just stand down and let his brother do it. But he's cutting the fool and stuff like this, and, and, and the man that left his wishes, just, just do what the pastor say do. Work with him. The devil is a nasty devil. Okay, I, I promise I'm just about through. Okay, go back over there. We stopped on verse what? Sister Tim, I'm going to get to 35. Y'all, I'm going to get to 35. I'm going to get to verse 35. We're going to call it quick. Okay, now no, no, go, go back to, did I hit 34? That, I think that was redundant. Okay, go, 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 to, go to 33. 33, Sister Tim. Read, Sister Thomas. In his humiliation, uh, his judgment was taken away. Now, now, he's talking over there in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7 and 8, and uh, how we read the wound for our transgression, all the stuff Jesus went through. He's reading about Jesus, but guess what? He don't understand it. Just because you know about Jesus, don't think everybody know about Jesus. Y'all hear me? Sister Taylor, just because you know he died on the cross and rose again, everybody don't know that. Brother Van, just because you know, everybody don't know it. One thing the Lord is showing me, don't ever assume that everybody know what you know. Amen. Amen. I done heard Bishop little jokes five times. <laughs> Say, Larry, that joke may help somebody else. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, help me. This thing I long said, Mother Cartwell done heard. <laughs> Mother Cartwell said, Bitch, you didn't tell it like that 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me, help me. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes Sister Thomas has to correct me. Y'all know it, it but I, I'm telling the baby. But, but now, this is what I'm saying. Look, <laughs> he's, talk, he's talking over there in Isaiah. Amen. And Isaiah, you can read it, Isaiah uh, uh, 53, 8, and it said his, his simulation, his judgment was taken away from him. They, 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 they just, he reading about how they treated Jesus, how they plucked his beard out, how, how they spit on him. And he, but he didn't understand that. 
he didn't understand him, humiliated and, and declared uh, his generation for his life is taken from him, uh, from how they took his life from him. You know, I heard about the Easter story, the Christmas story growing up, but I didn't understand it till the Holy Ghost owed my understanding of it. And I don't think it's a certain age to get it, but it's when the Holy Spirit illuminates your mind. Okay, go to 34. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to the, I'm, for the crescendo. I'm getting ready to the, what you call the end of a, a, a story? And the, eunuch, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of now, himself or of some other man? Now, boy, y'all get that question. Get that in New Living, Sister Tillman. Get that New Living. Now, this eunuch, read that, baby. Read that, Sister Thomas. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself Who was or someone about? else? He said, now, he thought that Isaiah was talking about himself, but Isaiah prophesied over 900 years before about Jesus. And, and this man, this, this unit couldn't get that. Because, praise God, you have to be taught the word. Even when somebody teach you, the Holy Ghost got to help you to get a revelation to understand Amen. Amen. You need to ask Philip, say, tell me, was Isaiah talking about himself? Now, this, this wasn't no dumb man. This man was over all the money. He was what we call back in Georgia a big shot. But even big shots can't understand the scripture unless the Holy Spirit illuminate their mind. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Tell me. And then, as we come to a close, go to Acts uh, 8. 35, and we're going to call this thing quit. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Now this is so important. When you share the word of God, the word isn't about Roger Thomas war stories. The word isn't, a, sometimes you get your testimony to get, a, get, a, get an audience, but after you done got their attention, you got to talk about Jesus. Then Philip opened his mouth, and he stayed right there where he was because the man was reading about Jesus. Now Philip began to talk about who he was reading about. And Philip preached unto him about Jesus. When you're preaching the word, praise God, and bringing somebody to Christ, you lift up Jesus. Amen. Jesus say, if I be... He began to... He didn't, he didn't talk about denominations. He didn't talk about the Church of God in Christ, the Baptists, the Methodists. He talked about Jesus. He didn't talk about water baptism. He talked about Jesus. He didn't talk about his grand church. He talked about Jesus. Amen. Get Acts 412, Sister Thomas. I'm going to get out of here. Praise God. I got to get out of here. Yeah, Acts 412. Woo! Somebody love Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. We got Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. When you're bringing a baby into the kingdom, you can't talk about you. Amen. You can't talk about me. But you got to talk about Jesus. Oh, Jesus! Jesus. There's power in the name of. Jesus. There's salvation. Yes. There's healing. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Philip caught where he was and went to talking about Jesus. Philip told him some more about Jesus. Told him about Jesus was born of a virgin. Lived a sinless life. Yeah. He walked through this earth and they spit on him and talked about him, but he never did no wrong. I believe Philip said, ain't nobody like Jesus. I believe he said, can't nobody do you like Jesus. and Can't nobody love you like Jesus. Can't nobody hear you like Jesus. I believe Philip just, just preached on Jesus. He just preached on Jesus. How many know you can talk about Jesus 365 days a year and nobody won't get mad but the devil? Ooh, how many love the name of Jesus? Oh, there's something about the name of Jesus. Sometime when you wake up in the morning, praise God, when you can't call nobody else, you can say, Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Philip just preached on that name of Jesus. How many know we get healed when we call on the name of Jesus? I wish I had three people to say, Jesus. Jesus. My rock. 
Jesus, my strength. Jesus, my doctor. Jesus, my way maker. Come on and say Jesus. And sometimes you just got to thank Jesus. Has he been good to you? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, first lady. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, there is a name I love to call. The sweetest name I know. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance. Philip just talked about Jesus. I know when you talk about Jesus, the text says there's no other name given unto heaven whereby men could be saved but through Jesus. Yeah. How many got saved calling on Jesus? How many got delivered calling on Jesus? How many got blessed calling on Jesus? I wish I had three people to call on Jesus, stand up and call on him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are doctor. Yes. You are way maker. Yes. You are provider. Yes. You are all in all. Yes. Jesus, my healer. Yes. Jesus, my way maker. Yes. Jesus, the lover of my soul. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. There's just something about that name. Kings and kingdom shall all pass away, but there's something about the name of Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We praise you. Jesus just, Philip just preached Jesus. He, he, he didn't go to preach about what he did in Samaria. He didn't go to preach about what Philip and John did, how they led him in the Holy Ghost. So the Byronah, he preached Jesus. He said, look here, brother eunuch. He said, Jesus died on the cross for you. He said, they put him in the grave, brother eunuch. And on the third day, he got up with all power, power to save your soul. Power, hold up, hold up, hold up, to heal our body. Something about the name of Jesus. I hear people talking about Jesus only. I'll tell you what, in St. John 14, 6, nobody coming to the Father but through Jesus. And the Bible says, whatsoever things you do in word or deed, Larry, you, 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 ain't, you, ain't, you ain't going through God. You, you, ain't gonna, you ain't going to God unless you go through. I say, you ain't going to God unless you go through. God ain't going to give us the time of day. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. And Philip went to preach to that eunuch about Jesus. I don't think he mentioned, say, now look, I go through the first church of Samaria. He ain't mentioned that. He talked about Jesus. And when that man understand about Jesus, that man got saved. Next week, we're going to read about him, how he, wanted, he got saved and wanted to be baptized. But first step is Jesus. St. John 14, 6. Say that one more time. We're getting ready to pray. How many love the Lord tonight? Lord, I love you so much. Love you, Jesus. Look here. Read that first lady, Thomas. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. way. I am the way. The way. But there are a lot of ways. There ain't number one way to him. I am the way. Read. The truth. Man, he's true. He's real. real. And the life. Uh huh. No man. Hold it. No man. No man. You mean nobody could get to God but through Jesus? No man coming to what? Coming to the Father but by me. That's the only way. It's all about Jesus. Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I hear people talking about, well, this, you don't be baptized in this. I tell you what, I tell you, you better watch what you say because whatever you do, get Colossians 3, 3, 3, 18. I promise I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop. <laughs> Colossians 3, 18 or 15, somewhere along with that. Colossians 3, 18. Uh. What? Okay. Go, go, go to 3, what, what it says? Uh, <laughs> where, where's that verse, Larry? Where's that verse? Colossians 3, 15. Wait, 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 get that verse. Uh, 
uh, about about what what sort of things you do in word or deed. Three fifteen. What what sort of things you do in word or deed? Do all in the name of Jesus. I, I, I praise God. That's three fifteen. And let the feast of God. Okay, three seventeen. Go on and read that. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You got to be crazy to try to fight that. That ain't even about no denomination. Amen. When you pray, mm -hmm. who you pray in? Jesus. When you eat your food, Father, I thank you. Amen. Whatsoever things ye do in word or deed, or deed, or deed yes. do what? Some? Do it all. Do some things? All. In the name? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks? Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Even when you give thanks, you got to give thanks through Jesus. Thank God for the word. Praise God. When he say go, how many are going to go? Praise God. Man, we're so glad to see. What's your name again? Alex? What's your name, my brother? What, your, my brother right there. What's your name again? Damien. 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 Damien, we're so glad to see you out, man. Listen, saints, those on YouTube and Facebook, let me tell you something. Praise God. That same Jesus that Philip told the Ethiopian unit about, Praise God, he's still the same today as he was back then. Praise God, and he loved us so much. He's sitting on the right hand of God right now making intercession for us, praise God. I just love Jesus. I know you do too. Praise God, we want to pray for you right now. I don't know what you're going through, but let me tell you something. The Bible says we could cast all our care on him because he cares for us. Stretch out your hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you thanking and praising you. For all of your goodness and your mercy, Jesus, we thank you for coming to this earth to die on the cross, to give us access to the Father. Oh, God, you that great high priest that sit on the throne. Lord God, make an intercession for us. You can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Lord, stretch out your hands. Somebody need healing. Somebody need deliverance. Oh, Lord, go in sick room. Touch Brother Kenny. Complete deliverance. Oh, I, I pray, praise God. I pray you lay hands. Some, one, one, one dear sister told me today, say, Bishop, you tell people to lay hands on yourself, but they can't get here. Let me tell you something. God can heal you. He can heal you any kind of way he want to heal you. Now, I thank God for doctors. I ain't fighting doctors, and I ain't fighting nobody else. But let me tell you something. God is God. Yes. If he say he could do it, he could do it. Do Father it. God, we touch ourselves, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask you to stretch out your hands and touch bodies. Yes, Lord. We bind sickness and disease. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, we come against that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we command those infirmities to go. Yes, go. And we speak deliverance in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. Lord, bless our children, our grandchildren. Lord, we pray you bless the saints everywhere. Come on, say, Lord, use me for your glory. And Lord, where you did not send me, help me to say yes to your will, your will and your word. In Jesus' name. God bless you, saints. That's our study tonight. Man. Praise God. I want to be like Philip. I just want to get up and go. Let me tell you, we thank you for how you've been supporting the church and, and mainly prayer. Sister yeah. Thomas and I, we don't take y'all prayers lightly. How y'all hold us up Amen. before the Lord thank and you. our associate, Pastor Ella Corey, and, yeah. and all the ministers here. Thank y'all for the love y'all yeah. show us. Yeah. Listen, we're in the midst of a big project here, and praise God, we're we trying to uh, do some needed things. And uh, we have gotten in over $110 problems. We're we getting some needed uh, sound systems and stuff for our church. And uh, we're asking everybody, if you can, do what you can. Uh, uh, if you, God bless you. One, one dear lady, I ain't calling no name, Mother Cardwell, but uh, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> she, one day she just sent $1,000 up to me. Maria and I, we're giving 1000 I know I'm, I don't know what first lady giving. I know I give a thousand votes. She may give some too, but whatever the Lord leads you to give, baby, I ain't putting you on the spot. I'm not putting you on the spot, honey. God, I love you too. But, but, but listen, we thank God for you. We want to get that out the way. And, and if you can't do but what you could do, we appreciate it. But we thank you for how you support the church. You really mean that, praise God. We got some wonderful things coming up. What's coming up uh, uh, soon? The, 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 the J3 Women Convention? Our J3 Women is starting July the what? 19th. 19th. J3 Women Convention on July the 19th. Yes. And so much going up. Again, we thank you for how you supported the convocation. We love y'all yes. so much. Amen. Amen. And saints, we want to say praise God for you. We love you. Yes. And we're looking to have a high time uh, the rest of the week. I don't think uh, any other services going on. 
We want to say goodbye to you. Thank God for our executive pastor being here tonight. And thank God for all of you. Listen, we're going to go out, those in YouTube and Facebook, when I count to three, say Jesus three times. One, two, three. Jesus! 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 Jesus. Jesus. God bless everybody. Amen.